Good morning. Welcome to Gloria Day on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's the second Sunday in the season of Advent, and we are happy you are here to worship uh, together this day. A couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, every year our preschool does what is called the giving tree, where they put ornaments on a tree, and those ornaments have uh, different gifts for families in need in our community and uh, they do quite a number of families. If you'd like to help with this uh, wonderful cause once again this Christmas season, uh, they have the ornaments uh, during business hours uh, on a tree that's taped to the door and the ornaments are there and you can pick those up uh, if you'd like during business hours or you can just call the church office and um, they can help you uh, participate in that wonderful ministry during this Christmas season. Also, it is First Fruits Sunday week, and so you can drop off your first fruits, your um, non-perishable food items for the food bank. Again, we'll have the uh, box outside the door, and you can bring those by, and uh, I think we're going for a record this year. We have uh, a wonderful amount of food that we've already donated, uh, and it's one more. This is the, the final month, uh, the last week of the year, when we will be collecting for the local food bank. Also, uh, if you haven't already seen, on Wednesday evenings we are having Advent worship services and we invite you to be part of those. Uh, look for your um, e-news to uh, sign up and be part of that. And it's kind of a special treat this year. Our confirmands are sharing uh, their statements of faith throughout this season of Advent. So a lot going on and uh, we're just glad you're here as we worship together this day. So let us gather now in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the, of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Set, stir up our hearts, Lord God, as we wait for Christ's coming as our good shepherd. Gather us in your arms, feed us with spiritual food, and wipe away every tear from our eyes. May the candle of hope burn brightly within our hearts and lives. By Jesus' coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, who relives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Well, it's my favorite time of the morning. It's children's time, and I'm so glad you are here. I was just reading the gospel scripture for this second Sunday of Advent as we are getting ready for the coming of Christmas and the baby Jesus. And for some reason, the scripture reminded me of my grandmother. When I went off to college, my grandmother gave me a wonderful quilt. Now back, and I have the, her, the quilt that she made me right here. We used to call her Grandma Mousy, and I used to ride a motorcycle. So you can, you can see on my quilt, she, she embroidered a mouse riding a motorcycle, and I went off to school to PLU, and so you can see a PLU flag there. Uh, on my quilt. And so when I was off at college, away from family, and I got lonely, I could take this quilt and wrap it around myself, and it made me feel all warm and fuzzy and, and cozy, and it felt like my grandma was there giving me a big hug. Well, in our gospel text for today, it's talking about John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist wasn't so warm and fuzzy. In fact, it says he he lived out in the wilderness, and he ate bugs, and he even wore a camel's hair coat. That doesn't sound very warm and fuzzy. But what John the Baptist was doing was getting us ready and reminding us about the coming of Jesus. And so, just like this quilt reminds me of the warmth and the love of my grandmother, John the Baptist wants to remind us to repent and turn around and think about God in your life and how Jesus can really change your life for the good. And that's really what the message of Advent and Christmas is all about. It's about having God in your life, looking for the miracle, the wonder of the baby Jesus and what a gift that is for us and how God calls us to wait and prepare and to, to, to live out that love that God has for us that's shown to us in the gift of the baby Jesus. Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you for giving to us John the Baptist to tell and yell to us to prepare the way. And thank you for all the people in our lives that bring warmth and comfort and love. We thank you for all these wonderful gifts as we wait for the coming of the baby Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. I hope you're having a good Sunday and a good Advent season. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? 
All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and they were being baptized by John in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, welcome on this, the second Sunday in the season of Advent, as we are again together, yet apart. We're in a time of darkness right now. Literally, it's the darkest days of the year happening right now, and also figuratively as the dark times of uncertainty, of loneliness, of insecurities, whether it be financial or food or resources, we are in some strange times in this moment of history, some, some times of, of dark paths, of unknown waters and locations. Well, I want to take you for a moment on the night path, the walk that I went on the other night. So join me. So welcome. Here we are on the path I took the other night on this really dark part of our neighborhood strip of a cul-de-sac. And when I was here the other night, it was about seven o'clock, but it seemed like it was at least midnight. I found myself walking very cautiously, kind of slowly holding my breath. And then I thought, well, maybe I should just turn around. And then I rounded the corner and there was this little candy cane lane, this house with all these lights and decorations, a little light in the darkness. And they had more candy canes. Looking good. Found myself breathing again. But then I rounded the corner and there were more candy canes. They kept going into the other neighbor's driveway. See that? All the way up and around. I don't know if my video quality does it justice, but it's so cool. And then it comes around here and guess what? All the way to a third neighbor's house. And I found myself smiling 
and laughing and talking out loud saying, oh my gosh, they had to coordinate this. They worked together to bring a little joy to the world or maybe even just a little joy to the neighborhood, but it worked. Thank you, neighbors. Well, welcome back inside in the soft glow of these candles in this beautiful sanctuary. I want to talk about the strange times that we're in right now. On one hand, it's so deeply challenging. It is like we've never known, and it's scary. On the other hand, this time is incredibly full of hope and of promise. It's the both and state that we're living in right now. Yeah, it's, it's like no other time in history. Books, documentaries, movies will be written about the year 2020. I have no doubt. Actually, they probably are already are being made. Our experience is so profound, so historical, and yet it is not unique to us alone. Our ancestors of the past, those who we meet in our scriptures today, both in Isaiah and in Mark's gospel, they were facing extreme hardships and, and times of darkness as well. Unknown terrain. So in Mark's gospel, people from all over the countryside were, were flocked to the edge of the wilderness to find John, to soak in and soak up his message of repentance, his call to prepare, to turn to God, and to be baptized. They were so desperate for a change. Something had to change. They needed this infusion of hope. And his message resonated. It, it lit up the community like a bonfire shining in the midst of the night. You know, Isaiah's hearers, they were people of exile, traumatized by war. And they had been in exile for so long now, and perhaps there was a certain numbness, a resignation to their situation, resigned to it would be what it would be. Perhaps they were afraid of the judgment, of the, of the, the words and the condemnation that might ensue from a God who was disappointed and angry. The prophet knew they were a reluctant people. They were wary and slow to trust in God. And so the prophet chose his words very carefully. And with listening, he offered these words. Comfort, comfort, oh my people. So here we are, these different periods of history, different situations, and yet we are so inextricably linked together in chronic humanity, in our chronic state of humanness, which means bumps and curves and bumbles along the rocky terrain. This life. It is not easy to be human, to grow old, to go through hardship. Days are short. Darkness is real, which is exactly why I'm taking a cue from our prophets of the day, from John the Baptist and from the prophet Isaiah. John, who implores us to prepare the way for what? Very first lines, for the beginning of the good news of Christ Jesus. The beginning of the good news of Christ Jesus. This is what it is. The one, the only. And from Isaiah, we hear our cue from verse 9 where, where, where the prophet says, Get up, you people. Lift up your voice with strength. 
and with confidence and herald good tidings, good tidings of great joy. Do not fear, for here is your God. It was true then, and it's true now. In the midst of all that this year 2020 has wrought, in fact, God, the Alpha, the Omega, is here. Here is God, we say today with strength of voice and heart. And God is so full of delightful surprise, for here is God, but another question begs to be asked, who is God, how is God? The God who is here is the one of delightful surprise, not with words of judgment, as, as may be feared, but instead with words of comfort. Comfort, comfort, now my people. Comfort, comfort, now my people, tell of peace, so says our God. Thank you for indulging me. That is my favorite hymn of all time. For some reason, it's always been on my top favorite list, and, and now I think I know why. It's like a lullaby. It's like a child on a parent's lap, and they rock gently back and forth to that sound of comfort, those soothing words, consoling, comforting God, which means the world to us, especially in times of trial. What other glad tidings can we herald about God? The message doesn't stop there. The God of Isaiah is concrete is definable. Particular words of promise are being offered, so, so here they are. Keep listening. Here is the Lord God coming with strength, with a triumphant arm, bringing reward with him and his payment before him. God, like a shepherd, feeds and tends the flock. God will gather the lambs in his arms. God will lift them onto his lap, carry them in his bosom, and and gently lead the mother sheep. God is both and, both powerful and gentle, able to comfort as well as to protect, to defend. This God is a, is a shepherd. God, this God, is the one we lift up with glad tidings. We sing, we shout into the darkness. But wait, there's more. Our gospel, this new vision, the beginning Mark writes about in our gospel, God Emmanuel, God's redemptive work in the world through Christ Jesus for all time, for all sake. Jesus Christ the embodiment of love and forgiveness infused for all people. And what began then continues. The gospel good news continues through us as we are called to be instigators, to be implementers of that love, to be signs of hope in this world. Like Ken Lake's three house candy cane lane. Like that, you are doing it as well. You are sharing the gospel, even in the darkness. The community kitchen, cooking and serving and cleaning up every Friday, providing sustenance and nourishment. And I know through you volunteers, smiles and words of comfort and love. We, through the food bank, support our, our community and our neighbors and, and the families in need through the giving tree. New things are being formed, yet the same gospel of love 
is being shared through virtual preschool, through virtual confirmation, through, through virtual pajama vespers and men's breakfasts and women's Bible studies and, and all sorts of different ways and opportunities. Because of your generosity and extra mile gifts, we have been able as a congregation to support two other congregations who have been impacted by arson. We have been able to support our neighbors in faith, Temple Beth Hatfilo, as they support a sanctuary family. We have been able to supply prescriptions and, and rent support for people because of you. And if you are in need, please let us know, and we will work together to offer help because of your phone calls and cards and texts of love and prayer and support. That means so much to your brothers and sisters in Christ. To us as your staff. It means the world, those, those, those little outreaches that we share with one another. And perhaps most holy. One of the most holy things is what we are not doing. Right now, as hard as it is, we are not gathering in person. We continue to show our love for our neighbors by wearing our masks, by staying the course, by not going out and by staying home and worshiping in creative ways praying for a vaccine and trusting that we will be together again, that we will gather together and get through this darkness. God is here and creating something new and beautiful. We can say that with a voice of strength and confidence. Dawn to daylight, into sunset, evening, the darkest of night, God is here and remains. God's love, comfort, shalom, peace is given to all the world. It's the foundation of our very being. And so with our voices, with our actions, with our words, may we continue to herald the glad tidings May we bring this good news to all the world, or at least little by little to our neighborhoods. God bless you and keep you. May God's comfort hold you. Amen.
God of all hope and of all power and justice, open the heavens and come quickly to our weary world. Comfort your people, hear our prayers for so many in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for your coming with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support in the midst of our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray that your spirit will give us a measure of John the Baptist's boldness, commitment, humility, and resolve as we share the good news of Jesus Christ and the promise of God's love and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even the disparities between your people, Bless our First Fruits Ministry this week and also the ELCA Good Gifts Ministry that we may share generously from what you have provided. Then sustain and support people with mental and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Also, we ask mercy and comfort for those who face illness, injury, and loneliness. Some on our prayer list, and also those we name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Tender God, we pray for all migrants and immigrants those who see their home and all it means disappear behind them, who cannot see a home in the days ahead of them, for all those who dwell in daily insecurity, who are weary and without a safe place to rest their heads, for these sheep of your pasture, provide for their needs and comfort them. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Patient God, we pray for grace and patience, also caution and concern for our neighbor during the continuing pandemic. In this season, we are accustomed to gathering for celebrations, worship, and family gatherings. Allow your spirit and our siblings in Christ to help us cope with and adjust to the serious implications of the pandemic. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is, is great. great. As we enter the Advent season, draw near us to loving God. Fill us with hope and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to share that peace with those around you or say a prayer for peace, especially in this season of Advent, the season of waiting. Uh, it's good to pray for peace for our community and our world. Let's continue now with our offering and offertory music.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. We give to you our thanks for your abundant blessings. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will realize hope and receive your blessing. Nourish us with your generous meal. Inspire us to care for all that you have made. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray, amen. As you gather around your communion table at home and as we gather here in our community of faith, we are the body of Christ together. And so as we gather, we remember that on the night of Jesus' betrayal, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so even now, as we receive his true body and blood, his true presence here in this bread and wine, let's remember the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you both this day now and forever. Amen. Shall we pray? Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life and hope forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. Help us to embrace and share with all who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies and keeps us all. Amen. growing family to love and serve the Lord.